Welcome back, Tubers. If you like this type of content, please consider a like, a subscribe, and also leave a comment. Thank you. All right, welcome back, Tubers. This is my channel, Reverend Jeffrey, and my name is Jeffrey, strangely enough. Um, I thank you guys for coming back. It's been a week or so since I put out my last video. Today is going to be an explanation of why I've titled it Disappointment. Um, as you all know, I was waiting for the appraiser to show up over the last few weeks. And he finally got somebody to come over, and uh, this gentleman came in, and uh, he really, really didn't have a surprised look on his face. It was more of a disgust. Um, as I found out later, the, he only does brand new houses, brand new, just built brand new. The paint is drying on the walls, move-in ready type of appraisals. Um, that does not work for me. As you all know, I've rebuilt this house from scratch. Um, I've repaired everything, and it's in the process of getting most everything done. Now, I've done pretty much everything that I can with a little bit of money. I've been maxing out most of my credit cards, and I've been getting all of the, the plumbing done, the electrical done, the sheetrock done. I mean, it's, I'm moved in. I, it's move-in ready. I moved in. Now, a lot of people wouldn't consider this move-in ready because I've got crap all piled up all around the house. And I cleaned out my storage unit. My, my one bedroom's all completely stacked up with, uh, uh, from those items that I have. And... Um, <clears throat> The guy comes in and says, this is a war zone. And I says, no, I live here. You know. Um, besides, my biggest complaint is that when an appraiser appraises a property, he's supposed to look at the volume, how many square feet it has, uh, types of amenities like a heat source, the plumbing, if the plumbing's done, you know, and if the electrical all works. You know, and everything's to code, and, and you know, yeah, it's about 90% there, you know. Uh, I'm, I've gotten it to the point to where I'm, I need all the big money to do the big pro projects, you know. I want to put a porch on the front side of the house and on the back side of the house. That's going to be several thousand dollars. I don't have cabinets. All I got is one cabinet, I, one base cabinet. Um, and I mocked up the kitchen sink. We'll all see that in a few minutes here. But, um, you know, I need the money to buy, I need the mortgage money to buy cabinets. You're talking two or $3,000, uh, roughly in my neighborhood, that I, the kind of cabinets that I want to get. I can get them used for 300 to $700. Maybe even a thousand dollars, I can get used ones. But a thousand dollars is a big whack on one of my credit cards. I don't have that much left. <clears throat> you know, countertops is a five hundred dollars, and then we're talking about flooring. I got to be able to put flooring in. Plywood is still. I was looking at plywood, a half inch plywood that I got to sheet the whole floor with. You know, before I put my finished flooring down on it. Plywood is still anywhere from fifty to eighty dollars a sheet. You multiply that by ten or twenty, and it starts getting into some bigger money, you know. Um, I did see one source where it was thirty-five dollars a sheet. I might just go with that for now if I have to. Uh, but I got to get. I'm still working on that kitchen, right? I got to get the ready for cabinets. I got to. Uh, clean off the old flooring on the in the kitchen, and then I got to do subflooring. I mean, not subflooring, but I mean I got to repair any spots in the subfloor, and then I got to sheet everything with the half-inch plywood, and that gives it a nice uniform surface. You know, I'm going to put all that that um, floating floor, uh, click lock flooring in, and it's going to be a, a pretty good quality. It's going to be eight mils, so we're going to get there about three eighths of an inch. 
Um, the half inch plywood and the three eighths of an inch of final flooring material brings up pretty close to three quarters of an inch, which uh, simulates the old flooring material. Uh, so that'll patch in really nicely on the transition areas, like from the living room to the kitchen and anywhere else that I might have to, uh, to do that. Um, so, I mean, I've got it all planned out, and the big money is what I'm needing to continue this project. So, um, word is, this guy could not do the appraisal because um, I'm not anywhere near getting paint on the wall, right? Paint is my last and final, you know, thing that I have to do to make this thing, you know, what they call move in livable, you know? Ah. So it's way, way down the list. You know, I want to get some decks in and I want to get some plywood. I want to get some cabinets. I want to get a few things and it's only going to take big money. If not, here's the disappointment part. I'm disappointed that he couldn't do the appraisal. So they're going to have to go find somebody else. I had a, a quick text with my manager at the loan company and they're going to see if they can find another appraisal that's more in line with what we're trying to accomplish here. So we're going to we're going to do that again. Um, I waited four weeks for this last guy to show up. Um, I mean, the loan it only takes a couple of weeks for the loan to close, and that's usually what we got to wait around for is the appraisal. They were five weeks out. I was lucky to get one in four weeks. Now. So now we've got to wait for another appraisal. Hopefully they can get them out within another week or two. Maybe they have to go with another company. Uh, you know, one that does remodels or, you know, rehabs or something like that. Well, I don't know. We'll see. But we're going to forget about that for now. That's all in the process. We're going to let the uh, loan people take care of that. In the meantime, let me get you caught up with what I'm doing. I had to... Uh, get some of my recycle burnt up. I, uh, as you can see up here in the corner, all of my cardboard boxes and my recycle. I got to get this, you know, the weather's been really nice. I haven't had a need to, um, to fire up the old fireplace. But, uh, you know, this stuff's starting to get a little stacked up. So I ran a couple of loads through there the other day and today. I mean, it just looks romantic. I mean, I really like a, a good fireplace. Um, all right, I'm going to start from one side of the house to the other. Again, last night I was waiting for UPS to show up. And uh, so what I did, check this out. I've always had a sidewalk that continued all the way over there to those steps. You've seen those steps before, but it was always buried. Ever since I did the roof full five years ago, I had it all buried, so what I've done last night, waiting for UPS, I started at 5 o'clock, I dug this whole sidewalk out, it took me uh, about an hour and a half, and uh, so I got that all, now it looks really pretty, but something I noticed, somebody broke out my front windshield, uh, my, my front window. So, I don't know why they would do that. All right, uh, coming back into the house. I've rearranged the front room again like um, like I was saying I was going to do. I put the, the desk over there and tucked everything away and uh, took a few things upstairs. Uh, tools are easily accessible. Again, I still might take this one four-foot section of tool uh, shelving and put it over here against this wall. Again, I got to come in here and I got to think about tearing this wall out. I can do that for free. Hang on. Let me go turn the. Um... Ah! One second. Don't panic. Anyway, um, I got to turn the inverter on, and then this way my lights work. Oh, look at that. We got light. So, again, the uh, the appraiser was having a, a hissy fit over the fact that I have 
no sheetrock on parts of the bathroom wall. And this part of the kitchen, I says, I'm not going to put sheetrock up on this wall. I'm tearing it out. I told them that I'm going to put in a couple of two by sixes up here for a header um, and then open that up to the living room. And uh, this guy's skin was crawling, I suspect. Like I was saying, he only does brand new houses. So I don't know what to tell you. Um, so what I've done here, what I've been working on is my, again, my plumbing system. Originally, as you saw before in my setup, my plumbing setup, I had two filter housings. And what showed up last night is my third filter housing. And then my, my last and final um, filter. So of the three, I've got a 5 micron. I've got a brand new 1 micron. And then my third one, let me read this to you. Uh, it's from Pentec. Blah, blah, blah. Tier 1 is designed to help ensure... You, sir, I can't even read that. Oh, my God. I need my glasses. You know how old people are in fine print. Okay, I got my glasses on. All right. You serve only high-quality water throughout your home. The filter, Tier 1 water filter cartridge, helps to capture sediment and dirt as small as 0.5 micron in size. Installs quickly and easily, no systems that accept into systems that accept a 20 by 2 and a half inch filter cartridge. Now, that's what I've got. 20 inch whole house filters by 2 and a half. I haven't unpackaged it yet. i got to pull the, the plastic off. So I'll do that here in a second. And then I will add this housing to my array in here I had to get a couple of mother uh, I had to get a couple of small nipples these are all oh, oh, oh anyway one inch one inch one inch um, and then I can transition to half inch from three quarter to half inch so that I can run my my water pressure gauge and possibly something else but I got to do a split I'm going to use my T's to split off. I don't know. i got to go up to my uh, UV filter. So that's what I'm going to put that together. And so we're going to... I'm going to get to that point. That's, uh, that's another conversion, three-quarter inch uh, from, from a nipple to uh, half-inch PEX. Now, the problem that I hate with the half-inch PEX is that... Inside, it's not half inch. The interior volume is only like three eighths. So, um, what what was happening? And uh, I'll tell you the other thing that was affecting it is that when you go down in filter size in microns, uh, five micron, one micron, then a sub sub micron, like this one's 0 0.5. I was going to put a 0.35 micron filter size in there and I've seen them as low as 0.2 microns but I finally settled on the carbon 0.5 microns the smaller you go the less water flow you get this is supposed to be um, final result is like one and a half to two gallons per minute doesn't matter how much you're pumping into the system. Like, um, like I was showing you here, the original pump that I had was 0.28, I'm sorry, um, 2.8 gallons per minute for a flow rate. And it was struggling. Like I said, in the kitchen sink here, it was only coming out maybe one gallon per minute. And then I realized that uh, for... A lot of other reasons, right? Because of the PEX tubing is only so big inside, and the fact that I was the five microns was slowing it down a little bit. 
Now the 0.5 micron is going to even slow it down a little bit more. And then I put this on there. It's rated at three and a half gallons per minute. It's too small. It doesn't matter what the flow rate is. It doesn't have enough pump capability to push the water. And in a moment here, we're going to go upstairs. I'm going to show you the big pump that I, I've always had. You know, that was part of the digging it out of uh, storage is getting my big pump out. So I finally got it out and I plumbed it up in the ceiling. Uh, there's a there's a piece of plywood up there in the rafters and then I've got my 50 gallon tank. I moved my 50 gallon tank upstairs and then I put the big pump on it. Now this pump that I've got is for well systems. So um, it has more than enough capability of pumping the water up into, um, you know, through my system. I've got my, uh, hang on, we're going to go upstairs. I've got my flashlight up there. Um, a little bit dark up here. I don't have my lights installed upstairs here yet. Oh, yeah, perfect temperature up here. All right, as you can see, my bed Water bed is set up. I got to pump up the air mattress. I got the windows open. It's a perfect temperature up here. I'm going through my boxes from my storage room downstairs. And as you can see, it's, um, oops, let me go over here. All right. Oh, you're going to, I'm going to have to get creative here. All right, I've got you kind of on the side, but there's my 50 gallon tank. Ah, oh, you can't see it. You can't see it too well. All right, see that, see that big pump on top of the tank right there? Yeah, that's a half horsepower engine on that sucker. And, that's, and then I've got my water pipe going down into the tank there on the left side there and then on the right side I've got it going downstairs to the filter system. So all I gotta do is wire that, that motor. So I gotta run a wire up to it. And uh, and then that'll be in operation. Alright, so now we gotta let's go back downstairs. Oh it's very comfortable up here. It's a nice, feels like a good 75 degrees. Interesting enough, it gets a little warm up there during these summer days. So, okay, let me put my glasses away. So anyway, um, I was going to set you down and then let you observe me kind of putting my, uh, my filter system together here. Undo the housing there. Let me, um, I got the screws. I got to put the, um, the mounting plate on the, the thing there. Let me grab my screwdriver. All right, one each Ryobi screwdriver and four screws. Okay. Okay. It only fits on here one way. It goes like this. Oops. In and out. You got to make sure the in goes in the right direction and the out goes the right direction according to how you're going to have it mounted on the wall. Let me get my uh, screws here started finger with my fingers they're almost like a wood screw not like a metal screw but they're going down into plastic so it's pretty much the same thing alrighty goes right there Looks 
good. That looks good. Solid as a rock. And now, I've got to put Teflon tape onto the threads. I don't usually take you guys through uh, me actually building stuff. I usually show you the, um, the le what's left after I get done putting it together. Okay, that other side's got thread stuff on it already. One, two, three wraps. I typically do about three wraps with the Teflon tape. And then we just line them up. Make sure the thread feels good. Yes, yes, yes. Go around. Now, here's the beauty about it. When you're putting multiple items together, um, I get the nipple fairly snug with my hand, not with a, with a wrench. And then when I put this third device on here like this, I let them both tighten up to where they're comfortable at. All right. Last time around, I got to line it up with the wall. All right. No wrenches involved in that. They all look really good. All lined up, ready for the wall. Here's my screw gun. Let's put this... Now, here's another thing that I was thinking about, too. Um, this comes out about five inches um, before it goes vertical up into the other pipe. Um, if I put a T onto here, then I can cut out about two of those inches. And I may be space limited uh, when it, going across that wall like that. So... I've got to have to think about that one tiny moment. All right. Temporarily, if I want to hook this whole system up, all I need to do is put another nipple on the end over here, and it will connect up to my pecs because the fitting is already there. Put some uh, Teflon tape on here. Uh-oh. This uh, was only a small tube. It was only one, enough for one wrap. I don't want to waste it, so I'll leave the one wrap on there. And I'll put two more on there with this one. Alrighty there. Coming around, there's, oops, two, three, oh, that's enough, three and a half. Okay. Stick that into the end of my third and final. Again, like I was saying, I gotta, I gotta hook up my UV meter. So what I'm going to do is that I'll, this will have to come apart later, and then I'll have to work with that. UV meter, again, is $250. I might be able to get it for $200 because um, the one I'm looking at was $250. It was 12 gallons a minute. That's a little overkill. The one that I really want is only six gallons a minute. It's half the size, which is fine. That will work for my system. Now, 
if for some reason um, I get limited to one and a half to two gallons per minute total, right, at the end, then that means that, um, well, like when you take a shower, most people only take a shower at two gallons per minute. So all I really need to have is one gallon per minute going through the hot water tank and then one gallon per minute going through the cold water. So at some point, it's got to split off. And um, so I only need about three quarters or one gallon going through the hot water tank. I say tank, but it's, you know, it's a hot water source. All right, so that pretty much finishes off these three. Let me get you into the utility room. you guys set up here all right so first things first I'm not going to glue it just yet I am still not sure about uh, exactly which direction I want to go so what I'm going to do is just put it up here for getting my screws set up and as everything works out It will meet up with this, but this is connected to my PEX. I may have to trim that off. So let me get some screws into that. I've got a bunch of screws I can put in a little later. How many do I have got right now? I got four, five, six. I got enough. One. All right, so I'm only going to do one screw a piece for right now. Like I said, I may have to change that. I will take a look at it because I have uh, I have a T. I could put a T in over here. That would save me a couple inches. Um, you can't really see it, it's off camera, but the pipe is slightly, slightly moved over, all right? And if I want it to be straight up and down, then um, I'll have to um, figure that out. So, we'll see. Now, what I've got is a number of filters to go in here. Let me get those ready. Here's my 5 micron that I've used. Okay. Just hand type for right this second. Okay. This one I've written on pencil on here. I've got two of them, so I didn't, once the plastic comes off, you can't tell what it is. So anyway, this is my one micron. Come on. Oh. Got to get the threads lined up. Okay. Now that's one micron. And then of this third and final filter that I had is a um, carbon activated submicron filter. Now, the beauty about filters is that sediment filters only can do so much. All right? And then you've got carbon. Carbon will do everything else like taste now if you were on city water carbon will help remove some of the chlorine taste but it also takes a lot of other tastes out of the water you know uh, staleness 
you know, the, the water's been sitting in rusty pipes, um, you know, ever since it got pumped from the utility department. And so it's got to clean up all of that. But in my case, I've got, uh, I'm going to do, oh my God, I'm going to do rainwater collection. So the only problem that you have with that is, um, well, first of all, you got to look at the path that the water has got to take. My water that I'm using right now comes out of the woods. It's filtered by the landscape. And so I got to get, um, if there's anything that it picks up off the land, right? Animal, urine, you know, animals go out in the woods, you know, whatever. Um, and then if I collect rainwater off of the roof, then you've got bird feces up there, you know, that it washes down and collects in the system. So you've got to filter all of that out. Now, the filter, the sediment filters will take care of almost all of that. But then you've got to be considerate of all the, the really bad stuff, the viruses, the bacteria, the, um, the, all the other microbes that, that get in the system, right? And the activated ch charcoal does a really good job of that. And the fact that mine is sub-micron also filters out a major portion of that. Now, keeping in mind the city water um, is very, very crude, okay? Um, you take a, a total dissolved solids meter, a TDS meter, and you measure city water, It'll measure anywhere from 60 to 200 parts per million. I've got a zero water filter bottle at home, the, the pitcher, and it does zero. You know, because it's got five stages of filters in it. And this filter stage right here, again, is going to be a minimum of four, four layers. All right? And city water is like... Um, 30 microns in size, I think, pretty much, plus or minus. It varies, you know, from city to city, of course. But again, uh, mine goes all the way down. It starts with 5 microns, so automatically it's better than city water. Then my next filter is 1 micron. It takes all of the other crap out of there. And then the sub-micron, carbon-activated filter, also takes out a ton more of that stuff. And then it goes through the UV filter, and the UV filter kills all the microbes, right? The, like I was saying, viruses and microbes and bacteria, all the other stuff, right? With a sub-micron filter, there is nothing for the bacteria and viruses and stuff to hide behind, right? The specks are so small that the UV is just going to, they're going to kill them right out in the middle of nowhere, out in the open. They're just going to, eh, you know, and that's it. It does a better job. The UV filter does a better job if you have a submicron prior to feeding into that, that device. So, um, again, I've designed my filter system to be 100 times better than city water. It doesn't matter where the source is coming from. could be the woods. could be off the roof. It could be anywhere. You could pump it in from a pickup truck or something like that. You, know, you put one of those big bladder tanks or you put a, an IBC tote on the back of your pickup truck and you go pump water out of the river from somewhere, right? Up here in the Northwest, there's no shortage of rivers, right? A national park system, right? So I can get any water anywhere I want, um, even out of the ocean, but my system doesn't do desalinization, okay? So it's all got to be fresh water. But anyway, so my system... As you can see, I've got three layers here, and then I'm going to tee off and come up and then do a UV meter. It's going to come back down. It's going to feed all of my, my system here. Now, I'm thinking since my T has got a threaded portion on it right here, I might just fit it on the end of this right here. Um, I'm not really sure. What I want to do is just put a U on it, come up to my UV meter, and the UV meter comes right back down, 
and attaches to this T system. I'm going to have to rearrange that one T right there. So um, that's in the works. Um, again, okay, let me, um, let me tighten up. They give you this nice little handle. Ah! I get this, tighten my filter casings up. There we go. Third and last one. You can see that. Okay, so those, they have a rubber seal in the top of them. They are now sealed. Um, this might drip. I, I've only got it put together by hand, but um, I'm still working on the, uh, the pump upstairs. i got to wire it first of all. But second of all, something that I just remembered is that I needed a... Um, a flow device. It's it's um what they what they call this is a um oh think of the name of it check valve. It's a check valve. So the water being sucked up from the water tank has got to remain in the water pump. So you don't want it to come back down. This way it keeps the pump primed. You got to prime the pump, and you want to keep that water in there pressure wise. So this is a check valve. So the tube that I got going down into the water tank, I'm going to pull it off and then put the check valve on it and then stick it back up in going to the input to the pump. So I still got to do that. That's a piece of cake. I don't, I don't need to put glue on this uh, per se because it fits so snugly that... Um, I mean, eventually I probably will. Once I get the whole system all completely working, then I'm going to glue everything, including this piece right here, if it all works out. Now, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And last and final thoughts, I got to put my water meter over here on the output of the filters. Now, you got to know the water pressure of the output, not from the input, because the filters are going to slow they're going to take a little bit of that pressure away. If I'm pumping in 60 PSI from the water tank, then I want a minimum of at least 40 PSI coming off of the output of the filters. So I'll be able to monitor that with my, my pressure gauge here. Now I've got two pressure gauges. One comes off the top of the, the, the pump, right? So it'll tell me exactly how much pressure it's putting into the system. And this here is going to get mounted after the filters. So that's another thing that I have to kind of plug in over here. So I got, I got to play with this system. This over here is taken care of. I think what I'm going to do is put a T in it. And then on the output, I got to put another, I got to put an elbow. So I don't have another elbow. I got to go find an elbow. And then you know, string up the UV meter up there. So anyway, it's all coming together. Um, I just wanted to show you the process. I don't normally do that. Let me get my head back into view here. Because um, normally what I do is I do all this little fussy work um, by myself. And I get things figured out. And then I let you guys know. I give you an update later on. But I thought I'd include you into the video here <clears throat> and uh, some of my ideas that, uh, that led me to this concept and also the fact that my, my water pumps are inadequate. This is an RV pump. It works great for an RV if you don't mind a little bit of trickling water. I paid... Um, 35 40 bucks for this pump you know shipping and handling uh, it was a total disaster uh, that's okay I can use it on something else you know if I get a fish tank or something like that I can always put that in there <clears throat> my pressure gauge um, I'm not going to be able to use that because my big pump my big pump already has a pressure gauge on it so that saved me there uh, but I'm still going to use the um, 
the, the pressure gauges on, that I bought here, this one, the extra one. That's going to be on the output. And then something else you could do, um, you could, I've seen them, I was going to buy one, a TDS meter for the output. You know, that would just kind of tie the whole system together instead of having to manually measure it. There's a, there's a device that, that you can buy from Amazon that actually measures TDS of the water flow going through your system. So, so anyway, we're going to consider that again. Um, another look at my kitchen here. That's where the microwave is going to go. I got all my other miscellaneous crap. I got, again, I want to upgrade. This toaster is a piece of junk. Um, I mean, it works. It toasts his toast, toasts his bread. But um, I think the the clicker that w when the toast is done, it, the clicker doesn't go off. So you got to you keep got to keep an eye on it. Um, but anyway, I want to really upgrade to an air fryer toaster oven. 99% of everything you cook can be done in an air fryer toaster oven, and uh, I don't need a big I don't need a big oven. You know, wall mount oven or under counter oven. I don't need a big oven. I'm not going to be doing you know 35 pound turkeys. Uh, one, I don't know that many people, and secondly, it only happens once a year. So, anyway, that's going to get upgraded. My blender's going to get upgraded. I'm going to get me a food processor because now that I'm into keto, I need food processors to do a lot of recipes with and stuff like that. And blender combination. This blender is a piece of crap. Like I said, that lid doesn't come on and off very easily. So then I got my juicer. My juicer works just fine. Every once in a while, I'll still make a smoothie or something like that. Uh, this little egg thing here is a microwave a egg cooker. You can put four eggs in there. It will cook eggs in the microwave without them exploding. It works perfectly. I love it. Um, my slicer, my cutting mat. I mean, I got everything I need. Rarely do I ever drink coffee, but I've got an old coffee maker that uh, my ex-girlfriend gave to me. I thought, well, what the heck? Maybe I'll make some coffee. I'll get into some of those specialty coffees, you know, blends and things like that. I might just do that. Now, to let you know, coffee and the male prostate organ don't go together very well. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm letting you guys know that if you're an older gentleman and you're drinking a lot of coffee and you're experiencing ED, then uh, guess what? I just figured it out for you. Okay, recycle. It's a nice, it's a nice balmy 68 degrees in the house here. <clears throat> it's 71, 72 degrees outside. I don't know. I might just throw another couple more loads in there. I got a ton of cardboard to go through. I want to clean out that corner of the living room. <clears throat> and then I got all these projects to do later on. I don't know. I've been slowly going through my boxes like you saw upstairs. I've got a... Here's a closet that's got a lot of my older clothes in it. I'm going to get, well, why are we looking in the dark? I, you know, turn some lights on. Jeepers. Um, anyway, I go through this closet here, re, uh, move all that stuff right there, and then I can start digging into my boxes all the way back, and I can clean out about half of this room. Here's my baby grand piano. I've been having to climb over the top of that to get all of my kitchen item stuff over there. Again, I'm still looking for a couple of things. I'm looking for, um, I've got a bread machine somewhere. I know I do. I've seen, I've got a copy of a keto recipe for a bread machine. Dying to use that. Um, I know I've got a Vitamix juicer back there. That's somewhere. I can dig that out. Uh, what else have I got? Uh, I, I used to have a meat slicer long, long time ago. We're talking 25 years ago. I don't know where it went. Um, I haven't seen it since then. So, I mean, I want to be able to slice up meat for whatever, you know, sandwiches or or whatever. We're, we're getting into it. <clears throat> but anyway, there, that's pretty much a summary of everything uh, for today. Uh, again, the title was about disappointment. <sighs> I didn't, uh, I was less than thrilled with that appraiser guy anyway. But, and then the other disappointment thing that I got, it was that 
I was working last night from 5 o'clock p.m. to 6.30 p.m. waiting for UPS to come by. And then I stuck around till 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, I said, screw it, because normally they come around 6 o'clock. Um, they have in the past. So I jumped in the car, ran over to my friend's house, had to do some more things over there, looked on the computer, saw that it was delivered at 8 o'clock, came back. Sure enough, my filter assemblies were all here. So, And uh, since I live on a highway, I don't particularly like leaving boxes on the front porch, you know, because uh, package thieves. I don't know. Um... People are breaking my windows around here. I don't know what the deal is. I hope it's not that other guy that I chased away. Well, that's another story. Watch my other videos. You'll see what that's all about. Anyway, thank you for coming by. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, again, throw me a like and a subscribe. And definitely a comment. Let uh, me know what you think about my filter system. I think it beats 99% uh, of all the other systems out there without getting into major corporate, you know, custom setups, you know. And I just put that together with uh, with a few bucks. Each one of those filter assemblies costs uh, about $47 delivered. Uh, and then the filters themselves, they range anywhere from $20 to $30, depends. Uh, my carbon filter was $20. My four pack of five micron filters was like $35, something like that. And my two pack of one microns was like uh, $27, something like that. Anyway, they're, they're about, you know, $10, $20 a piece. Uh, and you don't need to change them that often. <clears throat> you change your five micron now and then, and all the other filters should uh, last quite a bit longer, you know, so piece of cake there. Anyway, I love seeing you guys uh, come back again, and, and, and we'll see what uh, we got for a follow-up. I'm going to do some more nature videos. Um, right now, I'm kind of in a holding pattern on the house. I'm just going to be piddling around doing some little stuff. Like I said, I did the sidewalk yesterday. I might open up this uh, kitchen wall here in the next day or two, and we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'll bring you guys along as I do stuff, and... Uh, this place is going to be, hopefully, it'll be appraisable. You know, I want to get an appraisal done because I need that money. I need that money to do the big projects with. I got to do yard work, uh, landscaping. I got to do decks, uh, sheetrock. Uh, I, I don't want to ramble too much, but I have to. I need 30 to 40 sheets of sheetrock just to do the upstairs. So, and then plywood. I need plywood. Hopefully the prices are going to come down here sharply before too long. We'll see about that. I uh, will clue you guys in. All right. Thank you for coming by. We'll catch you next time.